Turning Pro is a do-it-yourself landscape and irrigation installation video series developed by landscape professionals to enable anyone to design and build their own residential landscape projects. The professionals of Turning Pro have transferred their years of expertise into this complete step-by-step -step instructional video series. Meticulously crafted by a landscape architect and a landscape contractor, this series has been developed to appeal to the do-it-yourselfer in all of us. Turning Pro professionals take great pride in presenting this series so anyone can create and enjoy their own outdoor environment. In this simple to understand video, Turning Pro professionals will take you through all the steps to fully install a fully automated irrigation system in your yard. Even if you've never attempted such a project, they will demonstrate the advantages and time savings of installing an irrigation system over manual watering. By delivering water efficiently through an irrigation system, grass and plant material will thrive. Regular and consistent watering will allow lawns and plants to establish healthy root systems and become more resistant to disease and injury. You will learn how to install a pop-up sprinkler system for lawns, connect your water line, Install a backflow preventer. Install an irrigation controller. Lay out sprinkler heads. Create sprinkler zones. Dig trenches. Install piping and install sprinkler control valves. We will also demystify irrigation equipment and products and show you how to select the right type and size of equipment for your system. All the steps you will see are tried and true installation techniques perfected by highly experienced landscape professionals. Each step is fully described and illustrated. From the planning stage to buying materials to testing the system, you will gain the confidence and skill necessary to install your own irrigation system. Before undertaking any construction project, it's always a good idea to be prepared. Check to see if there are any specific building code requirements or restrictions in your local area. Be sure to contact a utility marking service to locate all underground lines and services before doing any digging. An irrigation system will consist of several parts. At the water source, a backflow preventer should be installed. From this device, a pressure water main line will run out to the valves. An irrigation controller signals the electric valves to open and release water into the piping system. The valves send water through the piping to the sprinkler heads. The installation of these components will be simply explained as we install our irrigation system. Here to guide you through the installation process is Keith Hagman, a landscape contractor with over 30 years of experience in the field of landscape construction. His landscape installation company has constructed every type of irrigation system, from commercial projects to all levels of residential development. His simple techniques and methods for a sprinkler irrigation system have been perfected to produce a high quality installation that requires minimal upkeep and will last for years. What we need to do is assess the yard for to design our sprinkler system. One of the things we need to know is where does the water come into the home? The water that comes from the water meter is going to come through the pipe, enters the home right here, goes in. So this is the, the line that we need to tap into to get the water for the sprinkler system. You see here we have a three-quarter inch line coming off, put in by the plumber. We don't want to use that, we want to use a little bit more water, so we're going to tap into the one inch line down below the valve so that you can also shut your house off without shutting your landscaping off in case you ever need to do that. Next thing we need to know is where is the power source to run the controller. Here's where the power comes into the home. Let's take a look and see what we have here. Uh, notice in here we have all the breakers and we have empty spaces that we can install a breaker to run the sprinkler clock. It's a code that you must have a separate breaker to run the sprinkler clock and it be labeled sprinkler or landscape. So this ought to work sufficient for the power for the sprinkler clock. Let's look at an ideal spot that we can install the valves on this project. We're going to be bringing the main line up here. Probably right in here looks like a good spot to, uh, to put them. It looks like it's going to be out of the way of everything. And I think we'll pick this spot to put our valves in.
To begin the process of installing an irrigation system, it'll be necessary to develop a simple plan showing the layout of your residence. Graph paper will make this task easier. Begin by measuring your house from corner to corner and using a scale, sketch the outline on the graph paper. An architectural scale is readily available at most art or office supply stores. Mark the outline using the 1 8 inch equals 1 foot scale. This will be a very manageable size for most residences. After the house outline is drawn on your paper, measure out from all sides to perimeter walls, walks, patios, pool, or other structures and equipment. It is not necessary to have a high degree of accuracy at this point. If your plan is within 6 inches on any dimension, this will be adequate tolerance to lay out the irrigation design. Include the following items on your plan. The water source location. This is where the backflow preventer will be installed. Note where the irrigation controller will be installed. Once you have the house plan drawn, we will begin the design of the grass areas. There are several factors to consider when laying out the area for the grass. First, the overall size of the lawn will determine the type of sprinkler heads to use. For medium to small lawns, pop-up sprinkler heads will work well. For larger lawn areas, you will want to consider rotor or impact heads that have a greater distance of throw. Next, the shape of the grass area will affect the sprinkler layout, and by defining minimum grass widths, the sprinkler system can be optimized for watering efficiency. Our grass area has been designed to be accessed off a concrete patio and to allow for foundation plantings along the house and perimeter walls. Our plan now shows the design of the lawn area. We have measured out the length of the lawn area and determined the spacing of the sprinkler heads. We are using pop-up sprinklers with a 12-foot radius throw, but we are locating them at 11-foot 6-inch intervals to achieve head-to-head -head coverage and allow for normal fluctuations in water flow. Sprinkler heads are designed to spray in an overlapping pattern. At least two heads should be spraying back to each head. This layout assures full coverage with no dry spots. Sprinkler heads are available in different radius increments. Select the radius best suited for the size of the grass area. For example, use 6 foot, 8 foot, or 10 foot radius heads for narrow grass areas. Use 12 foot, 15 foot, or 18 foot radius heads for larger grass areas. By selecting the right size head for your area, you will keep the sprinkler head at its optimum efficiency. There is some radius adjustment with each head, but turning down a sprinkler's throw will significantly affect its performance. These heads are matched precipitation pop-up sprinklers. This means you will have even water coverage over your grass area, and one quarter, one half, and full pattern sprinkler heads can be piped together. Now that we have the sprinkler heads laid out on the plan, According to the 11 foot 6 inch spacing, it'll be a simple matter to group the heads into zones. First, to determine how many sprinkler heads can be grouped together for one valve, it'll be necessary to know the water flow rate into your residence. A typical residential area will have a pressure rating of between 50 and 80 psi, or pounds per square inch, and 10 to 15 gallons per minute flow rate. To determine the water flow rate at your home, first locate the water line that comes into your home from your water meter, which is usually located at the front of the house. There should be a tap or hose bib at this location. To test the water flow rate, you will need to use a bucket, preferably a large 3 or 5 gallon bucket. You will also need either a stopwatch or wristwatch with a second hand. Turn your tap wide open and record the time it takes to fill the bucket. Divide those seconds into 60 seconds. Multiply this number times the number of gallons in your bucket. This is an approximate water flow rate of gallons per minute exiting the hose bib. With this flow rate, you will be able to accurately design your irrigation system. Flow rates below this range will require that fewer heads be zoned together. Higher pressure may require a pressure reducer after the water source. We have determined using the bucket fill method that our water flow rate is 12.8 gallons per minute. For our plan, we will be using 10 to 12 gallons per minute to zone the sprinkler heads. Now determine the type of sprinkler heads you will use to achieve the greatest water efficiency.
Our plan shows the layout of the 12 foot spacing heads. Based on the total number of heads, we will be creating sprinkler zones with approximately 10 gallons per minute. Since we know what the optimum water flow for a 1 inch valve is, it is a simple matter to add the gallons per minute rate for each sprinkler head. For your yard, add the gallons per minute rate of each head to arrive at or just under 15 gallons per minute for each 1 inch valve. This flow rate is based on the optimum capacity for 1 inch pipe. Now that we've laid out all the sprinkler heads on our paper with our header and where we're going to be putting them all, the next thing we need to do now is add up all of the gallons that we have at every sprinkler head. So on the chart here you see that we show that, that a half sprinkler puts out so many gallons per minute, a quarter puts out so many gallons per minute, and a full puts out so many gallons per minute. So what we need to do to determine the zones or the valves is we need to add these together. Now what we want to do is on your paper, what I would do where you've laid it all out, we've marked the heads. Now let's go around and mark exactly what the gallons for each head that you have on it. For a quarter, we want to put a 0.6 gallons per minute. For a half, you want to put down a 1.2 gallons per minute. And for a full, it's 2.4 gallons per minute. Now let's do, let's mark up all of the sprinkler heads and let's add all of the gallons together for all of the sprinklers in our yard. Take that and now we're going to determine how many zones we're going to have so we know how many valves to run the zones. So you take and add those all together and it, on this particular job it's coming out to about 31.6 gallons per minute. Now with 31.6 gallons per minute, and we've already determined that we have between a 10 and 12 gallons per minute of water to use at your home. So at this home, we, need to, we know we're going to have to divide that. So let's divide 10 into our number of gallons per minute and see how many zones we're going to have. By doing that now, you see we're going to end up with three zones. They're not all going to be equal, but we're going to have three zones that is going to run the three valves. Each zone or valve is going to have approximately 10 gallons per minute. Now we know we have the three zones or three valves for us to divide it up. Now the next thing we need to do is determine the pipe sizing that we need to run our zones. So let's take a look at the pipe sizing chart. In, in piping of the system, one thing we want to do is start with the head that's the farthest away from the valve and add the gallons up as you're going along piping. Well, knowing that the first two heads are farthest away, these are adjustables. Now, in the gallonages of adjustables, you're going to have to kind of estimate them. You know that a, f a half is 1.2 gallons, a full is 2.4 gallons, you know that a quarter is 0.6 gallons. So, if your adjustable is a little bit less than a half, what we've done is we estimated our first two at one gallon because they're less than a half. So, we're going to go at one gallon there for our first adjustable and at one gallon for our second adjustable. Now, we come to our next head is a half, it's 1.2. So we're adding these together as we're piping, we get the 3.2 gallons. The next head we're going to add is a quarter, that's 0.6. So now we're at 3.8 gallons. And we want to do is continue right on down the line and as you pipe you want to add your gallons per minute together because the one thing we don't want to exceed is what we know from our chart is that we don't want to exceed 10 gallons per minute on 3 quarter inch pipe. We do have a little fluctuation so if our adjustables were a little bit more than we said, we can go up to 12 gallons and we don't 